Okay. So yeah, at least to see the first the concept, it's somehow uh, a common concept and also so, uh, it might be a really concept. So yeah, let's just start by the session will include everything like model building and training. So including them, including all of the process in ML loops and then using uh, ML flow to for the ML loops. So starting from the beginning, I think we can all explain on what model building and training is by now, right? We know how to build a model, we know how to train a model, and we even know what type of model to choose for what type of uh, problems and, right? And uh, to, it, um, we know how to differentiate between models to models depending on the project. And the other one is, so there is this famous say, that is machine learning engineering is 10 percent machine learning and 90 percent engineering part so most of the time uh, we will focus on the model part the model training the evaluations part right um yeah i think i'm audible and paper is visible if there is any pr problem just you know, unmute yourself and you can uh, stop me so yeah there is this part of the engineering that is other than the uh, building the model itself which which covers almost 90 percent you know um maybe the main effect or the thing that will bring the in product is the model part the machine learning part alone and but without the engineering part which means the collecting the data um going through the data uh, and things like that okay the deployment part and things like that that is just it covers just the same percent of the whole process so there are different team in email right starting from the data scientist then there is the data engineer there is the email engineer the product engineer um and maybe there is the person that will integrate the machine learning system with its system or with with an app, app or things like that so there are uh, a very long path or long uh, process or uh yeah a continuous uh there are variety of people and variety of um, with variety of professions that will be that will come together in order to build the machine learning uh, machine learning engineering machine learning projects or uh one project okay so what is in middle of so if we understand like the links of uh, building a machine learning uh, pipeline it's not just about the machine learning part but but it it also includes the engineering part and if we understand that there are many professionals who, who will involve on this pipeline then what is in the loops or what is the difference when we say that this is machine learning project or uh, this is just machine learning random machine learning or this is machine learning operations so machine learning operations or in the loops they are state of practice that automate and simplify email workflows and deployments so there is a workflow so when we say email loops it's about simplifying and automating every workflows and the deployment at the end so machine learning and ai are core capability that you can uh, implement to solve complex pre-worded problem and del deliver value to your customers email loops is an email culture and practice that unifies email application development with email system deployment and operations okay maybe before just saying that uh, how many of you I, I think some of you will be familiar with DevOps, right? You can just show me a thumbs up or you can just say something. Yes. Exactly. So as we just use for software development, as we just use DevOps and different DevOps tools, we use MLOps for machine learning. That is what just simply saying that in order to simply to simplify the a uh, workflow and development process we use DevOps and in order to simplify the workflow process to simplify into to automate actually the workflows in machine learning uh, of uh, machine learning workflows we we will use a loops so this process includes the model development testing integration release and the infrastructure management and probably that we have now mentioned is the first part right the data preparation uh, the data cleaning and things like that they also need to be automated so when you say email loops or as i say like when we think about building a pipeline actually we've just we've been using some pipelines or automation tools right can you mention some of them i mean why building machine learning models uh, through the projects that we have go that we have passed, we were using some pipelines or automation tools. 
right? Maybe you can write them if you're not able to speak anymore. You can write them on the chat box. We were using some type of uh, pipeline, pipeline sentence like that. So yeah, when I will be back, I will be waiting to see some answers here. I will just continue. So yeah, this process includes the model development, yes, I have said. So why do we require MLOP? So what, uh, what is the point of using machine learning operations? So at a high level to begin with, in mid life cycle, the organization typically has to start with the data preparation, as we have mentioned before. So we face the data from different sources, and then there is the data aggregation and the data cleaning and things like that. Then there is the data training in the machine learning models, which we usually consider as a full process of the, of the machine learning. And then there's the deployment, right? And the validate model as a prediction service uh, that other application can access through APIs and things like that. In the EDA part, uh, we are also very familiar with EDA. It requires uh, to experiment with different models until the best uh, Model version is ready for deployment. It leads to frequent model versions deployment in data versioning. There is the email process, so critical to systematically simult and simultaneously manage the release of new email models with application code and data change. So, um, an optimal email ops implementation treats the email assets similarly to other continuous integrations and delivery CICD environment software assets. You deploy email model alongside the application and service that use then those that consumes them as part of unified readiness problem process. So uh, as a whole, those all things are talking about, you know, as we have mentioned earlier, all the process including from the data preparation and then uh, as we do CICD uh, mechanism in normal software development and the deployment part also, the there is something called uh, retraining the model in machine learning, right? You can integrate that to the model, it's, uh, to the process itself by using uh, a simple email loops pipeline. So then what is email flow then? So email flow, it's an open source for a platform for managing machine learning world workflow. It is used by email loops teams and data scientists. So uh, one of the tools that we use in, uh, for, automation, for autom automation or for implementing email loops is email flow. Yeah. Pedro, yeah, the VC. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So those are kinds of, yeah, I will, you guys are right. And I was specifically asking some pipelines that we use in Mailflow. Yeah. yeah we've just mentioned in Mailflow, but what about, um, we've been uh, using Psyche's Learn, right? We can mention them as a pipeline. When we came to the DevOps part, like we, we using the Docker, which is also yeah, a DevOps tool. So yeah, for email loops, we can use email flow. So email flow tracking, uh, again, email flow tracking gets an API and UI components that requires the data about machine learning experiments and lets you query it. So what type of data or what type of uh, uh, record style, since we have the, we, we're already familiar with the concept of my building the model and uh, things like that. So there are some specific data that we expect to be tracked or to be recorded, right? So there is the, maybe if we are doing some, high, so if we, if we are doing, uh, we absolutely do the mo model training part, right? So we've just trained the model and we've made hyperparameter tuning, right? So there are some records for the hyperparameters we've used. We might need that to be recorded. Uh, the matrix, the accuracies, and things like that. And also, yeah, the model itself, the model that we've used. And at the end, maybe the model that we have trained or the new model that we have made after training the model uh, with our own data, with our own data, yeah. So we might be, we might need, we might be in need of tracking those data, so those numbers as a record, right? So you can use this component to look several, uh, aspects of your runs, here are the main components that you can record for each of your runs. So when we mean log is just by, we just mean by the, when we just say log, we just mean that we need some of the variables or some of the things that we've used for the deployment or for the machine learning uh, 
for the model uh, development and also deployment, we might need some of the variables to be logged or saved. So what do we see in our ML flow key? What do we expo exp expect from, we will just say that it's an API and it's with its own UI key. So what do we expect from that UI? The first one is source, which means it's the name of the file that launched the run. Okay, so we uh, we are running some model, or so we've built uh, some model, and with its evaluation, with its some metrics, after training or with hyperparameter tuning. So we need that file. We're going to run that file, right? So we expect the source of that file. Okay, where is this run coming for from? And then there's the code version. So when using an email for project, this would be a git commit hash. Yeah, we will be expecting that when using uh, those specific things. But uh, yeah, we uh, let's go to the parameters and we can be any key values input parameters to choose as long as the value and the keys are both strings also mentioned. There is the artifact sign, we might be weird, but we can see it, we, we're going to see it on the UI. We expect the artifacts, which are the output files in all formats. So artifacts let you recreating image pages, for example, models such as the pickle, the psychic learn models, and data files such as the parquet files. The starting in times means the record that's starting in time of our run, and the metrics that we use maybe for different types of like the accuracy, uh, different types of models that we have seen before. Okay. So this lets you, for example, track how loose functions of the model is converging. Additionally, it might be not visible over here. Additionally, a mail flow lets you visualize the full history of each metric. So the metric might be uh, improving itself or not. So uh, it will help us to track the the yeah the newly trained model and how is it acting or how is it uh, how the behavior is okay. So yeah, we will get to this yeah. Well, after seeing the interface, we're going. It is just like a guide. We're going to be back for this. So yeah, uh, as a whole, then there's the we got the concept of machine learning and training. Then there's the machine learning operations, which is trying to streamline or uh, trying to include every process in one pipeline, uh, and like using or tracking every environment, uh, every variables that we've used, mainly the major things in one in continuous thing. I will be including. Uh, on the last slide here and how to maybe if that is important how to install a mail flow but i think we can start from here so let's see what do we mean by the okay let's see So the first step is, of course, to install a mail flow key. Uh, we're going to install pip install a mail flow, and then we're going to run the server. So we're going to see that later, but it is just a simple step. We're just, I will include it on this last slide, maybe two or three steps. So after importing a mail flow, here you can see that we're importing uh, scikit-learn just to, for the, to, to build uh, the pipeline of, or the model, okay? And it's just the process that we're familiar with and the training process that we know. Uh, of course, we're going to use the IBIS data set again since it's for experimenting. And there is the parameters over here, which is uh, the parameters that we use for linear regression models, I mean, logistic regression models. So this might be the different in, this might, not this might be actually, this is going to be different depending on the model that we're going to use. And then this is the, we're just calling the model using those params uh, on those parameters. And we have fitted the X and Y train. There is the prediction and accuracy. Okay, this is the uh, the, the usual method or the, the usual machine learning uh, training and prediction that we all know. So after doing that, what we're going to do is we're going to track or we're going to see it. Um, yeah, yeah, we're going to, uh, sorry. Yeah, uh, we're going to set a server for the for tracking the operations that we've made above. Okay, there's accuracy set. So just remember what type of you know you might uh, you might use different types of methods on your uh, building while building your model. Okay, 
depending on the knowledge that you know before, try to make this part as uh, best as you can, as maybe complicated as you can. Also, you can use it for the different types of modelia. Yeah, we're just going to say that later. Uh, so yeah, as uh, robust as you can this part. So the in point is you just need to know which part are you going to be uh, tracking, okay? Which part are you are, are going to be uh, important? So yeah, after seeing that, we, we might uh, say something, okay? Yeah, for example, so we have just put it uh, in cyber local server here for tracking and We've just uh, see, say the ML flow, do the experiment ML flow quick start. It's going to be the name of the experiment. So here is while starting or running the ML flow, what do we need from the from this? Uh, what do we need to see on this uh, UI? Or is that the the log parameters, which is the parameters that we've used uh, for the hyper or the hyper parameters that we've used for the model, and then the matrix, which is the accuracy that is calculated in this case. And then the email flow say tag. This is just to describe what type of things is going on. Actually, this is found in the quick start of the email flow. You can check the documentation, but yeah, in order to go to it. And there is the signature. Signature will help us to see what type of input and output are we going to ex are we expecting from the model okay. Uh, so what type of input is the model expecting and what type of output are we going to get from the model? And then here is the model info, which is, it's great. It's passed as the model info. So there is the model is a lot. So the equation, there is the artifact pass, which is Iris model. There is the signature that is mentioned before the input example and everything, which is the model info. We're going to see where we're going to use uh, the model info. So after that, um, how we done the same thing, no, yeah. No, yeah, after that, um, we're going to, um, yeah, this is just creating a new experiment, which is same as the above one. Yeah, maybe we're there. So it seems like we have just trained the model and we've trained, I mean, we've logged all the things like the parameters, the accuracies, and uh, what the model is doing, the training information of what the models, and also the signature, right? So what is the point is, we can load this model or we can, after training this model, we can use the, that specific model in order to make prediction, okay? So load the model back for predictions as generating Python function models. So loading the model is from ML flow. Using this, we are uh, loading the model. So this is where we use the model info, okay? All the model info that are saved over here, we're going to use them in order to make uh, an infer or make another prediction. <laughs> we're going to put a, a prediction on the X list Okay, this is just yeah. So doing the predictions, so we, we have gave that the yeah those predictions, right? So this is that you can just this means that you can just imagine that we have used another data. We might have used another data X and uh, uh, another test data in order to predict another data. So this was possible because we have used the email flow key. So. I think we have already had, right? So we can we might also, but yeah, don't forget to create an environment. We have created an environment in here. I've just told you after doing, um, uh, after installing a uh, mail flow, what we need to do is a mail flow UI. There are different methods that you probably will get on uh, internet, but both, uh, they all can work, okay? Every steps can work, but you can go on your terminal or okay. So, yeah, uh, the easiest one is ML flow UI, but also there are this methods. Okay, it, it, it depends depending on the uh yeah on the it, it will just serve your uh, email flow here on the host you have, it has just mentioned your host but you can also just go to email flow ui and it's going to give us its own um it's going to 
to give us the link that is going to serve the our email flow but don't forget that we've just put it a place where to serve the model the email flow here right it needs to be the same with this one that we have uh get from here okay it can be uh on the port 8000 on everywhere but they need to be similar so you're yeah, taking this link okay yeah so here you can just see that uh it's we have already run the email for quick start okay that is why we are we're getting this one but we were supposed to uh, get only the default one but here we have get the experiment called email for quick start why is that this is because we have just named the experiment the first experiment as email for quick start okay so i'm just doubting maybe if there's if it is running another email flow let's check uh yeah yes i think it's just running another email flow So since we've not closed that port or the we've not closed the local server, let's just run the our notebook and this is just importing. This is the model movement. So this part will be the one that is going to connect with this server. Okay. So it's going to say experiment uh, with name ML flow quick start doesn't exist which means it's creating a new experiment. Okay, there is, since we have two parts, yeah, it's email for quick start. I have just de deleted the second part, okay? So yeah, the name of the experiment here is, okay, let's change the experiment. The name, which is just, we've made it email flow only, okay? So experiment with an email, email flow doesn't exist, which means creating a new experiment. And it has registered the model as tracking quick start. Because we have just said that register modeling is tracking quick start. That is how we know this model is being uh, served. Register model already exists and creating a new version of this model. Okay. So if uh, since the models that we've run have the same name as tracking quick start, it just created, created a new version of it. And it had just made the prediction, or we haven't tried this one. I think those tips are just looking at me. Let's make the prediction. Let us just make the prediction. So let's refresh this. Yeah, we've get the email flow and then mail uh, flow quick start experiments here. So going through to this email flow. We've got a run name that is this run name is just developed uh, uh, randomly. Okay, it is created one minute ago. It is this is the source that the uh, code had run from during this duration and tracking quick start. It's the name of the model that, or we have just put it this name as registered model name, right? Mm, yeah probably those two models are similar it's just because i have run them on different time or it was written two times i guess that is why so yeah the point is we have just run the model we have uh, after running this part or this connecting to the server if this port was different it was not going to be able to connect with that uh, with our server mm. so yeah that is how we were able to here import the model from the, using those model info from the model you are yeah you are right okay and then made a prediction uh, on the new data set let's go to the um, our ui okay so this here in the experiment part you will get the name of the experiments that we have just labeled the run the create um, at yeah, the time this is all that we have seen okay let's go to this specific part and let's see how it is uh, how it have saved the parameters that we have assigned to be saved okay yeah, this is the source. The logged model is uh, a scalar. The registered model name is here. 
So those are the parameters that we've set them with maximum iteration with multi class with random states with solvers. Okay. And the only matrix that we've run is the accuracy, which you can get here. Um, yeah, yeah, I was uh, expecting to go to wait. Yeah, the artifacts part. On the artifacts part, we can get the uh, uh, model schema, which is the, this is how we put the signature, what the signature is for, okay? It says that the, the required input, and it also states the required output. Okay, the input is the, it's a tensor type with float 64 and shape minus one four, which means that we can use, uh, it, it can be different types of flow, but with four features, okay? The output is, yeah, it can be, uh, different types, it's not uh, assigned, okay, since it's going to be Y. Yeah, this is the, so yeah, this is the uh, assigned name or the registered name. This is how we can use the email uh, flow or, or the email flow UI for uh, simple, uh, in the simple form or in the, for seeing the, for tracking the parameters and other things that we've logged in, okay. And also look from the the model uh, info and then make a prediction. So we have the idea is to include a as deep as you can in this part on the on the model building and the prediction part, and then uh, trying to log them or to track them using the, your email flow. After tracking your your um, this is the main part tracking your uh, server, getting your server, and then logging for. for uh, yeah, logging or getting all the parameters that you've used inside your tracker and then uh, use those models for another prediction. <coughs> so yeah, that was it. So if you have any question or anything you missed. Or do I, should I consider that, is that clear or was that clear, everyone? So yeah, just try to install a uh, mail flow and start doing with it. And if there's any question or if there's any sorry, if there's any question or confusion, you can just uh, reach out. Thank you guys for being here.